Hello and welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. Today's video is the first video of series about TinyML. Let's start by explaining what is TinyML. ML, as you might have guessed, stands for machine learning and in most of cases, not always though, nowadays refers to deep learning. Tiny here means that these ML models are optimized to run on very low power and small footprint devices, such as various MCUs. It is a subset of machine learning on the edge or embedded machine learning. Embedded devices come in all shapes and sizes, starting from embedded supercomputer NVIDIA Jetson Xavier AG to the tiniest of microcontrollers, for example, ESP32 or Cortex-M0. Why embedded machine learning on microcontrollers is put in its special category and even given its own cool name? Because it comes with a set of advantages and limitations. The attraction of TinyML is that microcontrollers or MCUs are ubiquitous, cheap, consume small amounts of energy and small. Take ARM Cortex-M0 Plus Core and this little Siduino Xiao board, which is built around it. It's, the board is as small as a thumb, consumes only 1.33 milliamperes per hour of energy, which means it can work about 112 hours on 150 milliampere battery and much more if intermittently put into deep sleep mode. And it costs as little as 4.3 US dollars. Thanks to recent improvements in model optimization and emergence of frameworks specifically created for running machine learning model inference on microcontrollers, it is possible now to give more intelligence to these little devices. We can now deploy tiny neural networks on microcontrollers for audio scene recognition, for example, to recognize the sound of breaking glass or elephant activity, hot word detection to activate devices with a specific word or even for simple image processing tasks. The devices with embedded microcontrollers can be used to give a new life and meaning to old sensors such as using accelerometer installed on a piece of machinery to detect vibrations for anomaly detection and predictive maintenance. Or distinguishing various kinds of liquids with a multi-channel gas sensor, as in this demo. The possibilities of TinyML are truly huge. What about limitations? The main limiting factor is RAM and flash size of MCUs. No matter how well you optimize, you wouldn't be able to fit that YOLO 9999 network into a tiny microcontroller. Same goes for automatic speech recognition. While hot word detection and simple voice command detection is certainly possible, the open domain speech transcription is out of reach of microcontrollers. For now, in this series of videos, we'll mainly be using ARM Cortex M4F core inside wire terminal development board. And as a bonus content, we are also going to use ARM Cortex M0 Plus core inside of Xiao development board. Wire terminal is a perfect tool to get started with IoT and TinyML. It is built around ARM Cortex M4F core running at 120 MHz clock, which is very well supported by various frameworks for machine learning on the edge inference. The board also has built-in light sensor and accelerometer, programmable buttons here, then 2.4 inch LCD display and two groove ports for convenient connection of more than 300 various groove sensors. You can find the full specs at the link in the video description. 
Software-wise, we'll be using Arduino IDE for device programming and a mix of Edge Impulse and TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers for modal training and inference on device. Edge Impulse is a user-friendly development platform for machine learning on the Edge devices, providing beginner-friendly yet powerful web interface for whole machine learning pipeline, starting from data collection to modal training and finally deployment on the device. I will also demonstrate how to use pure TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers in later videos of the series to build your custom modal training and inference pipeline. For this video, let's quickly train and deploy a small neural network to classify the gestures rock, paper, scissors with just a single light sensor. Don't believe it's possible? Well, let's find out. We start by registering an account on edgeimpulse.com. I already have the account registered, so I'll just press on login. Yeah. My favorite scissors need a flattened spectral. Then, since Y Terminal at the moment is a community supported board and doesn't have all the built in sensors data collection pipeline implemented yet, we will use Data Forwarder tool to collect the sensor data. We'll start in Clean Virtual Machine Ubuntu 1804. And the first thing we'll need to do is to inst install Node.js 12. Let's go to documentation, installation. The easiest way to install Node.js on Ubuntu is to use a snap package. We'll need to enter sudo snap install node classic. And then our sudo password. After, after installing NPM, you are likely to run into a uh, uh, into permission problem on Ubuntu. And uh, here it says to use the following command to fix the permissions. Please don't do that. It's a really terrible idea to change the ownership of uh, your Bing and Share folders, which are system folders on Ubuntu. Uh, instead, you should do the following. I'll leave the link in the video description and in the article how to properly install NPM packages global. After permission problems were fixed, you can continue installing Edge Impulse CLI, which has all the necessary tools for you to collect the data and then test the model after it's trained. After Edge Impulse CLI was installed, create a new project in Edge Impulse dashboard. I already have one called Video Tiny ML Flatten here and prepare to gather the data. You can forward any type of sensor data to Edge Impulse platform with Data Forwarder. Simply upload this code to your wire terminal using Arduino ID. Basically, in this code, each interval, uh, here we set interval to 25 milliseconds, we send a sensor reading from a light sensor and then a new line character. If you have multiple sensor values in one packet, each sensor value should be separated with a tab or a comma character. The end of the packet is denoted by a new line character. So you can just use serial print line in the end of each packet. In this project, we only have one sensor that sends one value in each packet. So this is pretty simple. Now let's connect wire terminal to the laptop. Choose connect to virtual machine. And then compile and upload. Once you uploaded the code to wire terminal, run edge impulse data forwarder on your bash terminal. Edge impulse data forwarder. Then log in with your credentials from Edge Impulse platform. Choose the name of your project. 
then enter the name of the sensor, which would be light sensor in our case. And then name the term and the device via terminal. Now you're ready to collect the data. Let's go back to the uh, to Edge Impulse dashboard and let's go to Data Acquisition tab. Now we can see our device here connected and then the name of the sensor, frequency is 40 Hz and sample length of 10,000 milliseconds. We're going to leave the default sample length and about the frequency, it is actually defined by the uh, interval in milliseconds value here. Um, actually, I had to retake this video because the first time I tried, I set the interval uh, to 100 milliseconds and that turned out to give uh, two coarse readings. Uh, basically, when I was doing the gestures above wire terminal, uh, if I had the interval set to 100 milliseconds, it wasn't enough to distinguish between paper and scissors because the gesture would pass above light sensor too fast. So set it to 25 milliseconds, which gives us a frequency of 40 Hertz. Uh, then you can start sampling. For each gesture, make at least 10 samples, 10,000 millisecond duration each. Uh, press on start sampling button. You need to provide the label name. I'll start with the paper label. Let's start sampling. And start making the gesture above Y terminal's light sensor. When collecting samples, it is important to provide diversity for the model to be able to generalize better. For example, having samples with different direction, speed and distance from sensor. In general, the network can only learn the data present in a data set. So if the only samples you have are gestures being moved from left to right above the sensor, you shouldn't expect train model to be able to recognize gestures being moved right to left or up and down. So it's a good practice to have really diverse data that fully encompasses the scenarios uh, machine learning model will encounter in production. So we got one, um, I just collected one sample for paper. Now let's change the label to rock and do the same with rock gesture. This time moving up and down like this for 10 seconds. And finally, let's have the scissors, scissors gesture, same way. Try again changing the speed and uh, possibly direction as well for every sample. After you collect samples, you will be able to see the raw data uh, here, just below the start sampling button. Um, X axis is the time and Y axis is the magnitude of light sensor output data. Collect at least 10 samples for each class. I already have the data collected here, which I did this morning. So I'll delete last few samples. After you collected the samples, it is time to design an impulse. Impulse here is the word edge impulse uses to denote data processing and training pipeline. I'd say currently this is the weakest spot of edge impulse interface. Uh, when, choosing learn, when choosing processing blocks and uh, the hyperparameters such as window size and window increase, and if you add processing blocks, you will see there are quite a few options here. Uh, but not so much documentation as of now, which can leave you confused, unless, of course, you have a degree in data science or digital signal processing. We will get to explaining different pre-processing blocks and their parameters in later articles and videos of this series. 
For this proof of concept project, I have tried three different pre-processing blocks. I started with simple flatten. Um, let's see. Let's go to flatten block here and see what it does. Basically, it takes the raw features, which are, as you remember, values, the light sensor readings, and then after pre-scaling, I pre-scale it um, by factor of 0.001, so basically dividing the values by 1000. Uh, then it takes the average, minimum, maximum, root, root mean square, standard deviation and other parameters of the features in the window that we de defined in, in the previous step. So, for example, you can see that uh, the first number here in processed features is the average of the raw features divided by 1000. And then the second number in processed features is minimum, the, the smallest number of raw features in this particular time window, again, divided by 1000, and so on and so forth. Um, so, that's it. This, this was one, one of the, my first model. Then for the second model, I used a spectral analysis block. Let me open another project, spectral. And then spectral features here. Here we can see different parameters and um, digital signal processing results, frequency domain and spectral power. Uh, and also we can see the process features. And finally, for my last model, I have, which I have in video tiny ML, I have decided with just raw data, um, to decide to go with raw data scaled by factor uh, by 1000 divided by 1000 so as you can see in this case we got the raw features and the processed features are just the same features divided by 1000 after you defined after you defined the processing block you'll need to choose uh, the learning block in this case we'll choose neural network keras and then finally press on save impulse. Make sure that you set window size to 1000 milliseconds and window increase to 50 milliseconds in this case. Uh, then after you have chosen the parameters for your processing block, you will need to press on save parameters and go to generate features. I already have the features generated. A nice feature about Edge Impulse platform is that you will be able to have a look at the features um, after pre-processing step. And in this particular scenario, for example, we can see that the, we have the average, um, the average values for X axis, uh, minimum values for Y, and for Z we have the maximum values after rescaling. Um, now the blue dots are paper, orange dots are rock, and green ones are scissors. Despite that we can see the clear separation between three different classes, there is still some fuzziness here around the edges. And we will see that it will indeed affect the modal training and the final accuracy. So after you generated the features, doesn't matter which preprocessing block you use, you can go to uh, your learning block, which is the neural network classifier. And then here for, um, for flatten processing block, I have defined a very simple, fully connected neural network with 20 neurons in the first hidden layer, 10 neurons in second hidden layer, and then output layer with three labels. For spectral features, it's actually absolutely the same, same structure. And then finally, for raw data, since um, processing raw data with a fully connected network would take too big of a network, I have decided to use 1D convolutions. 
to reduce the number of parameters in the network. So I start with the reshape from, from shape batch size 40, which is what we have an in input layer to batch size 140 and then and then use two then I have two blocks of 1D convolution, eight filters in the first and 16 filters in the second, kernel size 4 and 10. Then we flatten the output of the last convolutional layer and then feed it to the output layer which has three neurons, one for each class. As you can see, um, the simple flatten pre-processing with fully connected network only could get a 69.9 accuracy and there is a lot of confusion between paper and scissors, which is not surprising. Um, in fact, you see that uh, this is paper and this is scissors. They are actually similar, more similar than the rock. And then it's almost the same result if we use spectral features. And finally, we have really good results, 92.4, and actually we could have increased it slightly with the convolutional neural network and raw features. What can we uh, gather from this simple demo is the fact that um, pre-processing step is really important and you cannot substitute working with your data and actually understanding the best format to feed the data into your neural network, especially when you're working with neural network that small. In fact, our the final neural network only uh, is only 35 kilobyte in size and uses 4.6 kilobytes of RAM. After the training, you can test the model using live classification tab, which will gather data sample from device and classify it with model hosted on edge impulse. We test with three different gestures and see the accuracy that's satisfactory as far as proof of concept goes. The next step is deployment on the device. After clicking deployment tab, choose Arduino library and download it. Make sure you have Eon compile enabled and then press build. I will create a job and uh, compile your model. And you can save it. Then extract. And put this into Arduino libraries folder. Open and close your Arduino ID. Now you'll be able to see it in examples. Name of your project, inferencing edge impulse. Choose static buffer, example. And you can see that uh, all the boilerplate code for running the inference and outputting the result is actually already here in place, which is very neat. The only thing for us left to do is to is to fill in the data acquisition on device. We'll use a simple loop with the delay to account for frequency. If you remember, we had 25 millisecond delay when gathering the data for training data set. Certainly, there are better ways to implement this, for example, a sensor data buffer, which would allow us to perform inference more often. But we'll get to that in later videos of the series. For now, let's compile and upload the code to wire terminal. After the code is done uploading, let's open the serial monitor, set the baud rate to 115, clear the output. All right, and we see our predictions printing out in real time. As you see, classification time is really small and the DSP time is more than 1000 milliseconds, but that's just because we have this delay and we have the for loop with the delay that takes that much time. All right, let's try making some gestures and see how the probability changes. Well, this is definitely paper. Now this is clearly scissors. That's very good. And finally, it doesn't recognize rock that well. I will try 
a little bit later uh, in a different light because I think the light here while recording is different from when I was making samples. mind-blowing while it was just a proof of concept demonstration it really shows that TinyML is up to something big as a person who does a lot of computer vision projects I knew that I it is possible to recognize gestures with camera sensor even if the image is downscaled significantly what I didn't know is that it's possible to recognize these gestures with just one single pixel tell us your ideas about cool tiny ML projects in the comments for video or article and stay tuned for more videos in the upcoming weeks. I'll see you next time.